Hi, it's Jen and welcome to my channel. So today is July 30th and so obviously yesterday was July 29th, which is the day my dad committed suicide six years ago. Um, I wanted to come on here and talk about this because in general, I am 100% okay with my dad's death. Obviously it's a horrible thing that happened, but it doesn't affect me in a negative way day to day. I would say I have post-traumatic growth and I'm in a really good place most of the time. But when the anniversary, July 29th, comes around every year, it affects me in a different way each year. And this way, it hit me harder than it had in like the past few years. Um, just like a little recap, like the first year after, I was like devastated, cried my eyes out on July 29th. Then the year after that, I don't know, like for the next like four years or so after that, it was just like the day happened and maybe I would think about it sometimes, but sometimes it's just like wouldn't even be that big of a deal. But yesterday, I don't know, like I like got in a little, like me and my boyfriend had plans to do something and they got canceled. Not like it was neither of our faults really, or it was both of our faults. And it's just like, I started crying a little bit because of that. And then the crying couldn't stop because I just think that like something in my body about it being July 29th was affecting me still. So I cried a lot yesterday, um, way more than I would have liked to. And part of me was like mad at myself for crying, but you know, you just have to be like self-compassionate sometimes. And you know, you can't t turn back time. So I can't take that back that I cried. Like I wish I could have spent more time in nature yesterday, but I just didn't because I was crying so much. But um, I just wanted to talk about that because I know people might think that as the years progress, you might feel less hurt. Um, and I think in general that's true, but maybe when it comes to the anniversary, that's different. Maybe it, it has to do with like surrounding factors. Um, but I think this year, especially like starting in May, I've started realizing that I want to integrate my dad more into my life. Um, because I would say like he committed suicide the summer before my senior year. So senior year was rough. And then I went off to college and I felt like I was in a new place and I was in a new place. So for four years I kind of was like, cool, like that's like not my problem, not my life anymore. Like I don't live in the house he lived in, like I wouldn't have been with him anyway because I would be away at college. So I feel like college was like a good time to get away from it. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but it was way easier for me to cope with his death when I was at college. And right now I'm still like in Ithaca where I went to college. So it's like, not like the circumstances changed, but I think as I delve into spirituality and um, like asking like, I don't know myself these questions about what I'm still feeling pain in, um, it's coming up that I want to integrate him more into my life. Not just in the sense that I want to like help people and prevent people from committing suicide, even though I still want to do that, but even more so I want to really take in his good qualities that he had and think about him every day in a positive way, not just in a way that's like, oh, my passion is helping people because my dad committed suicide. And instead I want to also integrate like his love, his humor, all these like great things about him and just think about him all the time because he was an amazing person. My dad has also been on my mind a lot lately because last week I went to a Gabby Bernstein retreat, which was amazing. And while I was there, I was really like hung up on this thing. <laughs> it was like really ridiculous. It doesn't even really matter the thing that I was hung up on, but it was basically like one YouTuber had made a horrible video about another YouTuber. And I was just so mad that someone would do such a thing. And it was really hard for me to deal with because I've been trying to give up judgment lately. And I really do believe that every person is deserving of love and that every person like should not be like, we, don't, we don't deserve to be judged but like I couldn't reconcile that with the fact that this person did something to hurt another person and I was also upset because I couldn't reach out to the person that he hurt because that person is famous and they're not going to hear my message which is like you know just like silly it's like a sign that I need to be grounded and stuff like that but I was really trying to figure out it's like why do I care so much and then I like while I was at this like Gabby was like talking and stuff and I I think she was talking about giving up judgment or using other people as assignments um, and I was like trying to think like what is my assignment here what is the thing that I'm supposed to learn from all this stress I'm getting from this silly situation that I'm not even involved in and then I like wrote down like maybe I'm so upset because I can't help 
this YouTuber right now. And it drives me crazy because I want to be able to help people. And maybe it drives me crazy because like I couldn't help my dad. And I was like, whoa, that's powerful. Like I didn't realize I was still so like hurt in that way. Like I always thought of myself as very healed from his death and just like have moving on. But like that was a really painful thing to think about. And then as soon as I wrote that down, Gabby Bernstein was like, okay, now we're gonna do a feeling meditation where we I play this like beautiful music for five minutes and you just feel all the pain you have to feel right now because we're in a safe space right now. You can feel your pain. This is a safe place to do it. I have these like trained women who you can talk to after if anything like serious comes up, but it's really important to feel all of your feelings and not to hide them. So I was like, oh, okay, I know what I'm gonna be feeling about, thinking about during this. And I just cried my eyes out so violently and I, you know, haven't, that was a week before yesterday, so until then I hadn't cried about my dad like that um, in a while. Definitely not that, definitely not crying that hard. And um, I, so we did that and I was crying my eyes out and like towards the end of it, I was like almost like a little pissed at Gabby. I was like, Jesus, that really hurt. Like, is this really, really necessary to reopening the, reopen these wounds and to do this? Like, what the heck? Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary to reopen wounds, but in, in reality, I think that that was a good thing. And I think it, in this sense, it did because I learned something from it, which I'll get to in a second. But anyway, after the meditation, Gabby was like, does anyone have any burning desires, things they want to say? So I rose my hand. This is my first time raising my hand at the retreat. There was like probably, I'm not going with numbers, but maybe like 300 people there at the retreat. Um, I don't know if you were there. This is at Kripalu. Um, let me know how many people are there. But um, I raised my hand and like looked her straight in the eyes. And she was like, I don't know why, but I want, I want you to give the mic to her. I want this girl to, I want to hear what this girl has to say. And at the retreat, it, that made me feel really cool because like, at the retreat, like there was, these girls were just handing out the mics to whoever, and I feel like I was like the first person that Gabby like pointed to and was like, "Give the mic to this person." So they gave me the mic, and I like, you know, told Gabby in the room I was like, "My dad committed suicide like six years ago, and because of that, I wanted to help prevent other people from committing suicide by empowering people and just like helping people in any way that I can." But I feel lots of pain when there's people out there that I can't reach, people out there that can't even hear my message because they're too famous or like too this or too that. And I don't know how to deal with that. I don't want to let that go, but I feel like that's my assignment. I feel like I have to let that go, but I don't want to. I like, you know, I do this because in a way I feel like saving other people saves my dad or makes it like it wasn't all for nothing. And so Gabby responded by saying, um, other people aren't your responsibility and like something along those lines and I was just like well then why do you do what you do because she's a healer she helps people so I'm like why are you helping people if it's not your responsibility and she was like whoa that's like so profound and then she was thought about it for me she's like hold on I need to think about this and then she's like it's not your responsibility to save other people but it's your responsibility to stand in your own light and then you standing in your own light will lead other people to follow potentially. And they're more likely, pe people will never change if you try to force them to change. They can only really change by seeing you live that out first. And like, I feel like that did take a lot of pressure off of me because like, I can just focus on myself. I can just worry about being my best self and not worrying about like pulling people out of these like dark, dark places that and like when I try to do that, it doesn't even work most of the time. But when it, what usually works the best is like when I'm helping someone who wants to be helped and then that makes a bigger difference. And it's just like, it's like sad that you can't help people that aren't ready to be, like people just like aren't accepting of help all the time. And I guess that's okay. I guess that's where they're on their journey. Like I know when my dad, like right after he died, I didn't want to read my Buddhist books as much as I love Buddhism. I'm like, I'm not ready to hear that everything is love and this and that. I just want to wallow. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that's necessary for people to heal. But like that pressure isn't on me to heal people that don't want to be healed or I don't physically have the ability to heal because they're far away or something like that. So 
I, that did like take pressure off of me. I believe, I believe in that. I believe that I am my best self. People are more likely to become their best selves too. Whereas if I like am this person who's stressed and sad and crying all the time because I can't help everybody, I don't know how that's gonna help anybody else. So that was like kind of like a healing thing, I think. I think that healed one of the blocks that has been caused by my dad's death. So that's a positive, that's something like that's a good thing that has happened recently. And um, so I think it is good to like really feel into your feelings and maybe you'll have to reopen old wounds and maybe you need to seek therapy if necessary. But I highly recommend like if you're feeling things, don't run away from it. I recommend feeling into it and trying to learn something from it or just like, you know, accepting that you feel a certain way. Journal it out, you know, go to a spiritual retreat. Um, I, I recommend it. But so that's like where I'm at today. Like, you know, I'm yesterday I was extremely upset about my dad's death. And then today I'm more back to normal, thankfully. Um, and I'm more just saying like, how can I live my life in a way that like, you know, I like feel like I'm helping people in order to like help my dad in some way or like, I don't know, make it so it wasn't all for nothing. Um, I don't even know if that's even like the right way to think about things like that, but that's where I'm at right now. Um, and just honor him by helping other people. Um, that's where I'm at. And then I'm also at the place where not only do I want to help him by helping other people, but I also want to stand in my best light because that would honor him because obviously he would want me to be happy and I think that I can help people best when I'm in my own light. I hope you like this video. Um, please like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more and if you have lost someone even if it's been like 10 years or five years or one year let me know in the comments and let me know if anything in this video resonated with you. All right bye.